Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, like I said, today and tomorrow, I'm going to break this up. Normally, if this was like a real class period, um, we would have time to practice. I mean, like, like I said, I'm going to try to just cut some stuff and just try to do two days or two lessons or whatever. And this lesson will not take us very long, although I do want to save some time at the end. I'll probably record the time at the end as well uh, to show you guys some example problems that you can expect to see. Okay, so uh, the next kind of main section is about waves and how waves transfer energy. There are lots of different types of waves that uh, can transfer energy. We have things like sound waves, light waves, seismic waves. Um, there's water waves. So we're going to talk about the different types of these waves. Like I said, this is so much easier to teach in a classroom setting. When I have you guys here, I can demonstrate some of this stuff for you. But obviously, I need help doing that. And so... I might just post some videos so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right. So, the, and by, by the way, if I'm going too fast, whatever, I'm going to post these slides online so you guys can fill in the blanks here. I just don't want to keep you um, here for like an hour or whatever. Okay. Definitely don't want to do that. So what is a wave? So a wave is classified as something, a disturbance that can transfer energy. Now, sometimes these waves need matter. Sometimes they need matter, okay? A wave that needs matter is called a mechanical wave. So a mechanical wave is described as a wave that requires a medium to travel through. So medium is a fancy word in this section for matter. So waves that require matter can uh, be things that can travel through the water, so obviously a water wave needs water. A water wave is classified as a mechanical wave. Um, some waves can travel through the air. So like we, uh, uh, sound is a good example of that. Sound needs air to go from point A to point B. Um, the ground, for example, a seismic wave, uh, any type of matter, can, any solid liquid gas that can transfer a wave, that's called a mechanical wave. The second type can go through matter, but doesn't need matter. And that's called an electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic wave is a wave that doesn't require medium. It can travel through space. So like when you think about the electromagnetic spectrum from chemistry one last year, um, I hope this is recording. Oh, maybe it's recording. The electromagnetic spectrum from last year, that was like visible light and x-rays and gamma rays and microwaves and all those things. Those things can travel through air, but they don't need to. They can get from the sun to earth traveling through a lack of uh, matter. Okay, so we're going to talk about kind of these two. Um, basically, sound will be mostly mechanical waves, and that's probably next week. And then after that, we'll talk about different forms of light, energy, and electromagnetic waves and how they travel. Okay, so those are kind of the main two classifications. What we're going to focus more on today is how they propagate or how they go from point A to point B, how they go from their source to wherever it is they're going. So mechanical waves. And like I said, we'll, we'll worry about electromagnetic waves later. Mechanical waves can travel in three different ways. The first type is called a transverse wave. It's an energy to tra it's a, it's when energy travels perpendicular to the wave motion. This is what you think of when you think of a wave. So if you guys have had a trig or you've uh, dealt with like a sine wave, this is what you guys are thinking of a wave that goes kind of like this. Okay. Our traditional form of a wave where the energy source and the energy is moving that way, but the matter is moving up and down. So think of like, I don't know, throwing a rock in a very calm lake and the water oscillates up and down, but the energy propagates that way. So you'll notice that the energy is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave moves. Okay. So that's what most of the time we use, to be honest with you, is just kind of this whole idea of a wave. And we'll talk about the different parts of these waves in a second. So that's called a transverse wave. 
Um, the thing that we say causes the wave to go is defined as a pulse. A pulse is the disturbance that gets this wave to go. So like if I went to a very calm pond and I lobbed a big rock into it, the energy of the rock hitting the water would be the pulse and would have the waves propagate from the point outward towards, uh, towards the outer part of the pond or whatever, okay? So a pulse is a disturbance that causes the wave, right? So um, that's transverse waves. The other wave's a little bit harder to draw, <laughs> so you'll see why. A longitudinal wave is when energy travels in the same direction as wave motion, okay? Once again, I cannot demonstrate this crap. Um, think of like we had an outstretched slinky, okay? Here's our slinky, and I just stretched it all the way out, and I compressed a bunch of the slinky here, and I let go. The energy would propagate in the same direction as the slinky. So it would just kind of like oscillate back and forth, okay? Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Sound waves move in the following way. So like when you hear sound, basically, we'll get into this a little bit more detail down the road, you're hearing some compression and expansions of air. So the disturbance is causing the air to compress and expand and it propagate out okay and it moves in the same direction so as the energy moves so does the matter so it's in the same direction okay once again way easier to demonstrate if you guys are here but can't so what ifs okay so longitudinal waves when they travel in the same direction and then the combo between these two are called surface waves surface waves are a combination that occur at the boundary of two different media so like if you are out in the middle of the ocean, you're probably experiencing surface waves. So surface waves travel in kind of a circular manner, okay? Now, let's pretend that we are out in the ocean, but it's a calm day. So the water's not at the surface isn't being pushed to or fro, all right? It's just kind of hanging out. What happens is, is that the if this is you hanging out, you have at the border of water and air, right? Actually, I'll draw it right here. I'll draw it at the top here. So water and air, you get these weird surface waves where the water goes up, it goes left, it goes down, it goes right, it goes up, and basically you don't move very far. The reason that a boat would move on a lake is usually not because of the water pushing it, it's because of the wind pushing the boat. If it's just like sitting there hanging out without an anchor, okay? Or the surface water getting pushed by the wind. But basically if water is oscillating up and down, left and right, it's not moving, okay? It's not moving. So it's not, it's not moving in terms of a net displacement. It just kind of circles around. Once again, Way easier to show you when you guys are actually here, but whatever, you have to take my word for it. So three types of waves, um, transverse, longitudinal, surface waves. We spend most of our time talking about, to be honest with you, transverse waves. Um, yeah, get that, okay? What we're gonna focus on today is how we measure waves. And you guys already know how to do this. If you have taken trig, if you've not taken trig, it's not a big deal, okay? I'm telling you, don't worry. I can see, I can't see some of you, but I can, I can sense the like vomit in your mouth. Like I'm going to throw up in my mouth. Don't teach me trig. Dear God, what's happening? Okay. So like, no, 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 don't worry about that. I'm not going to teach you trig, but some of the measurements of that whole like sine wave or cosine wave are the same things that we're going to look at today. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys the same, the things you can measure in a wave. And I'm going to try to explain how those things can fluctuate and how we can actually calculate them, okay? So the first thing that you can measure on a wave is how fast a wave moves. And that's the speed of a wave. So speed of a wave is basically, the whole idea is how far, and I'll give you some equations in a second, all right? So we're gonna get, I'm gonna give you two equations for speed here in a second. But let's just use a really easy example. 
light travels fat a light wave travels way faster than a sound wave okay a light wave travels way faster than the sound wave a number that i want you guys to write down that we'll eventually get to is 343 meters per second that is the speed of sound at a certain temperature okay 343 meters per second that's the speed of sound just put that somewhere we're going to use that down the road okay so to contrast that light travels at about three times 10 to the eighth meters per second so it's quite a bit faster when you're really close to something like a lightning strike it's flash boom crap your pants right because it's really loud flash boom oh my god but if you are in a thunderstorm and you see the flash and you wait, you wait, you wait, and then you hear the boom, that's the reason. It's because speed of sound is so much slower than the speed of light, especially and it's magnified by distance away. So you can measure the speed of a wave. You can measure the amplitude of a wave. An amplitude of a wave is basically what we think of as the height of a wave. So I'll just draw a couple of transverse waves here. So here's my first transverse wave. Here's my second transverse wave. This one has a bigger amplitude. Okay, so that dotted line represents the pond when it's perfectly calm. If I throw a bigger rock in, I get a bigger amplitude. Okay, so basically amplitude is the height of a wave from its midpoint. So amplitude will deal a little bit more down the road when we talk about sound and like loud sounds are amplified, okay? So we measure amplitude. We can measure wavelength. I'll draw another transverse wave here, okay? The wavelength of a, Sophie's here. Uh, the wavelength of a wave is the measurement of two identical points on the wave. So it doesn't matter. Easiest thing to measure is crest to crest. We can measure trough to trough we can measure midpoint to midpoint all of those values assuming i can draw a wave that actually is uniform they should all be the same so wavelength is the length of two cycle or of a cycle of a wave or two identical points easiest way is to go crest to crest now i'm going to give you guys a symbol for wavelength that we use we use that like, what is that thing that is an upside down Y. That is the Greek letter lambda. We use a lowercase lambda to indicate wavelength. I think it's lambda. I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's something. I know it looks similar to that. Sometimes people draw fancy lambdas and it looks like, I don't know, a weird giraffe or something. I don't know. Okay. So that's wavelength. Wavelength is measured in any measurement of length. So, meters centimeters millimeters so on and so forth okay okay these next two are kind of uh tough <laughs> once again easier to explain when you guys are here um the period of a wave is basically how many seconds go by per one cycle so it's related to speed and wavelength okay it's the time it takes for one cycle to occur i think we did period when we did our pendulum exercise at the very beginning of the year did we do the period of a pendulum where we swung a pendulum back and forth i don't know like that was so long ago man i can't even tell you but it's how much time yes okay whoa <laughs> okay sweet so it's how much Sorry, that's that okay was i was just i just was used to all these mutes and then and then booyah there you are i love it it's great so the period is the time per one cycle typically with period we use a capital t and it's labeled in just seconds we get rid of the cycle part okay so period of a of a wave is the time it takes for one cycle right so if you had a wave propagating toward you right you're sitting there hanging out it would be and you had a stopwatch and you're right there it'd be how many how much time it takes for this point to hit you and then the identical point which would be one cycle kind of a dumb measurement 
Here's an easier measurement. We use the inverse of this, which is called frequency. We're going to label frequency with the lowercase f because the Greek letter kind of looks like a V and it gets confusing. So we're just going to label it with an F. Frequency is the opposite of period. So it is defined as the number of cycles that occur per one second. Okay? The cycles that occur per one second. Typically, when we label frequency, you're going to... We, we get rid of the cycles. So the label for frequency, you'll sometimes see labeled as one over seconds. That's dumb. You'll see labeled as seconds to the minus one, which is the same thing. That's dumb. They figured, hey, we got to get a better label for frequency. So these things are all equal to a measurement that we call hertz. H-Z. Okay, hertz. Maybe you've heard of that. I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to give you some, um, some, I guess, equations in a little bit. I'm going to show you guys how at least those four are tied together. That's going to be it. Fire away. Oh, um, what was wavelength measured in? Did you say it, it anything? Can be, it could be measured in any form of length. Typically for us, that would be meters. So it could be meters, okay. centimeters, millimeters, nanometers, if we're talking about light, you know, because lights would have a really short wavelength. So any of those things. Okay. So I'm going to give you some equations. I'm going to tie this all together. I'll do an example problem. I'm going to say peace out. That's how this is going to work. Okay. Um, equations. So I'm going to give you two equations for the speed of a wave. But you can find speed two different ways, all right? So the speed of wave can be found two different ways. The first way is how you guys measured velocity a long time ago, right? The velocity of a wave can be found by taking the, dis the displacement that it travels over the time, okay? So basically, if a wave covers 100 miles, in one hour, it's traveling 100 miles per hour. It's kind of a duh. We've done this. That's from a million years ago. Okay? So that's the first way you can measure speed. What's more applicable to our measurements with waves, especially the smaller they get, is this equation. Velocity of a wave or the speed of a wave is equal to wavelength times frequency. Wavelength times frequency. So this one, I'll explain the labels and everything and how, this, how these guys interact. With these guys, your measurement in velocity is going to be based on what your wavelength is measured in. So for us, let's just keep it simple. Let's say we have a wavelength of, you know, we'll just do easy numbers, one meter, okay? And the frequency is... I don't know, two hertz. So one meter times two hertz is going to equal two. Now, why people will go, all right, so is the label for velocity meter hertz? <laughs> well, that's kind of a weird label, right? Here's the deal. Hertz is equal to one over second. Does it make sense to you guys that if I put a one over second here, that would be like saying meters per second. You guys get that? Okay. Typically for us, the frequency needs to be in hertz and the velocity or the wavelength needs to be in meters to kind of combo meal that. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, guess what? Hertz aren't a very common measurement. Sometimes kilohertz are used. Sometimes megahertz are used. And that compounds the issue of, oh, crap, I have to remember what those prefixes mean. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. In order to get our velocity in meters per second, you have got to convert hertz or the kilohertz or whatever to hertz. I know that's kind of confusing. Once again, it's way easier stuff when uh, you guys are actually here. So two equations.
Now, is it okay to have centimeters in this in Hertz? So we're centimeters a second? Yeah, sure. Right now it's fine, whatever, okay? But you gotta make sure that frequency is in Hertz. Would you guys like some conversions? I'm gonna give you the big two, okay? One kilohertz is equal to a thousand hertz, okay? One megahertz is equal to a million. It's one times 10 to the six hertz, okay? Those are kind of the big two. So if I say two megahertz, well, that's actually two million hertz, okay? So that obviously changes your speed a little bit. So those are our first two equations. I'm going to give you one more. And the second or the last equation I'm going to talk about is the relationship between period and frequency. Okay, so period and frequency. Okay, so the relationship between period and frequency is... Uh, and it doesn't matter how you want to do this. It, uh, frequency is one over period. Or you, if you like it the other way, you can say period is one over frequency. It doesn't matter. They're just, just flip-flop. Okay? So frequency is one over period, or period is one over frequency. It doesn't matter which one you use. They mean the same thing. It's just opposite variables. Okay? Um. The last thing I'm going to show you is the relationship between wavelength and frequency. Okay. So I just want you to look at the, you don't have to like calculate any of this business or anything like that, but just kind of understand the whole concept of I'm going to draw two waves. I think I'm going to draw two waves. Okay. So there's wave number one, right? Okay, that wave got out of hand. Okay, so there's wave number two. These are both transverse waves. Now, something I'm going to tell you about these waves is that those waves are traveling. Let's just say they're sound waves. So they're both going 343 meters per second. You'll notice, though, that they are going from point A to point B in a different fashion. You have one wave that like spread out and this wave's really bunchy. They have about the same amplitude, okay? So what gives here? Here's what I want you guys to notice the relationship. If you have a big wavelength, then you have a small frequency. If you were standing right here and you were, these waves were hitting you, I want you to notice that if they're traveling at the same speed, this wave hits you with only three crests in the same amount of time that this wave hits you with like a lot more, okay? Big wavelength equals small frequency. Conversely, small wavelength equals big frequency. So like this guy hits you, just way more of those wave fronts hit you, okay? They're traveling at the same speed. So like, let's put this in real life. Like, what does this mean? This means that um, this would be like me talking to you versus one of you ladies talking. If we're talking at the exact same um, volume, me talking versus the ladies talking. Me, lower frequency, lower tone, okay? Ladies, higher frequency, higher tone. That's where you get pitch in like music and stuff. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's kind of a relationship of all the things, all right? We'll do one example of a problem and then we'll shut her down. Um, if you guys have any questions, just unmute and holler at me. Okay. Okay. All right, let's say we have a sound 
let's just say it's um, I don't know, somebody drops something on the floor. But it has to be a little louder. Um, a church bell rings. Um, you're standing 515 meters away from it. And you hear the sound 1.48 seconds later. So the church bell rings and you don't hear it for 1.48 seconds. Question number one, what is the velocity of that sound wave? Now, I told you sound travels at 343, but here's the deal. You'll learn later that it depends on the temperature, which sounds really weird, I know, but it depends on the temperature. So we're going to get something close to 343 here. I'm not sure. It might round to 343. Okay, so how would we find the velocity of the sound wave? Well, using equate, the first one I gave you, if you have a distance and you have a time, you literally just divide distance over time. So we would take 515 divided by 1.48, and we get, okay, about 348. And we'll be labeled in meters per second. So an easy use of the first equation. Now, second equation, or a second question is, all right, we know the speed of this wave. Um, let's say the sound wave has a frequency of, heck, I don't know, uh, 436 hertz, okay? So the frequency of the bell or the chime or whatever is 436 hertz. Second question, if we know the speed and we know the hertz, what's the wavelength of this thing? Okay, what would be the wavelength of this sound wave? Well, once again, we can use that other speed equation. Speed is equal to wavelength times frequency. Okay, so this is in meters per second, that's good. This is in hertz, so that's good. We got to keep them in hertz to get that one over seconds. So we would just divide 343 by 436, and we get a wavelength. Now, hopefully you guys can see this. That's meters per second. That's hertz. Our length is going to be in meters. It would be 0.787 meters. So that's kind of using both speed equations. So like sometimes you'll be given distance, sometimes you'll be given time. Sometimes you'll be given wavelength, sometimes you'll be given frequency. So it just kind of depends. You have to kind of see how those guys all factor together. Um, what else could we find? Last thing we could find if we- I have a question. Fire away. I have a question. Why would we use, would we use 348 for that one or we would always oh, use crap. 348? Uh, no, no uh, yes, we would use 348. I'm sorry, I screwed that up, okay? So I just went back to the default. So it's going to be a little bit different here. Good catch. That's why you unmute and yell at me when I screw up. <laughs> I miss you guys yelling at me uh, when I screw up. Okay, so I got 0.798 meters. Boom. Good job. Who was that, Sarah? Nice job calling me out. Okay. So yeah, in this instance, we'd use 348. Okay. Last thing we could find here, I guess, if we cared, is we could find the period. What would the period of this wave be? Well, if we know frequency, then we kind of know period, right? So the period of this wave would be whatever 1 over 436 is. So small number. And so that's labeled in seconds. Hopefully it makes sense to you. I mean, like, waves traveling pretty fast. It's not going to take very much time for a couple of those wave fronts to hit you. So the period tends to be pretty small. The bigger the frequency is, the smaller the period is. Okay? All right. That's that business. Does anybody have any questions other than why are you an idiot? Why did you screw that up? Because I'm an idiot. I don't have to tell you. I have kind of a question, Mr. Shaw. Sweet. All right. So, like, back to the picture, 
yes. of like you speaking yes. in a voice. Yes. The sound sound wavelengths. Yes. Versus like a girl. Yes. So how would that change if you were yelling and if like does sound affect that like volume? Here's, if I was, and by the way, I'm not even drawing the right types of waves here. Okay. They should actually be longitudinal waves, but like, it's just easier for me to teach it this way for right now. Okay. So like, let's say this is you, Sophie, right? <clears throat> and this is me yelling. Sorry. It's going to be bigger amplitude. Same. Okay. I, I'm yelling, right? So the wavelength is really not going to change. But it, obviously it does here. I did not draw it very well. Probably be, should be a little more bunched up. But the amplitude is going to be much bigger. So like, Sophie, electric guitar, you plug it into an amp. You plug it in an amp to amplify the sound waves. Ah. Okay? So it just what it does is it just makes them bigger. Like I said, I'm not even drawing the correct form of the wave because I'm not going to yet. We'll deal with that later. I just use sound as an example. Okay. So the frequency doesn't change, but the amplitude does. Yeah. Yes. And probably if I was screaming, I would probably, my frequency would probably change, right? Like I would, I don't know. It would probably be a little bit higher pitched. I'm guessing if oh. I was screaming, I don't know. I haven't screamed at anybody lately. It's, I, it's been sad. I miss, I miss you guys in class so I could scream at random people. Take your hood off. I don't know. That might have been actually a lower pitch. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to push stop on the record, but I'm going to hang out here. Um,